Okay, so I'm getting back into the electronics phase of uh, all my work, and I wanted to cover a couple basics that I'll be uh, showing as I go along with those. Uh, first, this stuff is called heat shrink. Uh, you put your wires inside, heat it up, it shrinks. Uh, easy enough. Got some LEDs here, so I'll be showing you mostly working with these. And uh, some fiber optics on hand. Good pair of wire strippers is real handy. Uh, I'll be using some solder in this. Got a soldering gun, which is similar to an iron, except that it's trigger based. So now it's on, now it's off. Heats up pretty fast. And uh, what I'll be covering in this one is soldering LEDs to resistors. Another thing that you'll need is a power supply. I've got this 12 volt wall wart which I use uh, as my basic uh, power supply. This is heat shrink to some alligator clips and here is the open uh, circuit so you can see some sparks there even though that's sparking it doesn't really uh, hurt too much if you accidentally touch it so don't worry about it but uh, as with all electronics always be as careful as you possibly can you should always be grounded you should always uh, uh, be careful <laughs> you don't want to electrocute yourself Fortunately, with a wall transformer like that, the odds are real low. So this is a white LED. Uh, I think it's probably like 13 or 17,000 millicandles. I think 18 or 19, maybe 20 milli 20,000 millicandles is the brightest. And uh, of course, the lower you go, the dimmer it gets. These are usually run off of 3 to 4 volts. So as I said, this wall wart here is 12 volts. So if I plug this in without a resistor, what's going to happen is it'll light up for a second and you may have just seen a spark and this is dead already. Sometimes they smoke, sometimes they pop, but uh, this is a useless piece of plastic now because it wants 3 or 4 volts, you just gave it 12 volts, it couldn't handle it and that's where resistors come in. There's a lot of mathematics involved with resistors that I don't have offhand. Basically I got all these LEDs with 12 volt resistors specifically because I usually work with 12 volt wall warts. You'll notice that there are two wires coming out of here. One is the anode, one is the cathode. I think the cathode is positive, the anode is negative. If I got it backwards then the anode is positive, but I'm pretty sure the anode is negative. And either way, the uh, shorter one is always negative. Usually what I'll do to uh, help me out so I don't just accidentally do things wrong is just bend it off to the side. The resistor basically stops too much electricity from going into whatever it is it's resisting. Uh, if this was a 9 volt resistor and you put a 12 volt on it, it'll get more juice again. If it's too low, too high, you'll get uh, either destruction or it would light too uh, dimly. So if I put like, if there is such a thing as a 20 volt resistor onto here, then this would be really dim if it lit at all. So again, that's where the mathematics comes into it. Uh, what I'll usually do is, what you can do is trim these down so the resistor is right up to there but I'm kinda lazy in that regard and what I'll do is just wrap it around like this so now if I plug this in there's no worry about light because this is stopping that 12 volts down to the 3 or 4 that this wants and you're safe from there you can from here wire 
uh, more LEDs onto this and they will all get the 3 to 4 volts. Eventually you wire too many and they'll all get dimmer. Usually I'll put one resistor to one LED just for uh, simplicity's sake. And also if you put three or four together off one resistor, if one dies, they all die, just like Christmas tree lights used to in the old days. Giving each one its own resistor and its own source to the power supply keeps them all going. That's uh, serial and parallel wiring. I, that's the difference. I can't tell you which is which though. So we've got the resistor wired on here. Now what I want to do is make this a good connection. I recommend getting a pair of uh, extra clips, hands, And uh, let's get that out of the way there. So having these little alligator clips is real handy. Unfortunately, I lost this one. Magnifying glass hasn't really helped out too much. I just use my uh, regular reading glasses for that kind of stuff. So when you're dealing with a soldering gun or iron, this gets exceptionally hot and uh, you know, if you accidentally, if you have a soldering iron which is always on and you accidentally let it go, you're gonna, you could have a fire on your hands pretty quickly. I'm going to give this a couple seconds to warm up and you can probably see some smoke going on. If it's the first time you ever use your soldering iron or gun, then uh, basically you just want to touch the tip to uh, some solder, that's called tinning. And you can shake it off and I don't know if it's in vision right there, but there's a piece of solder on the table there. So that'll get rid of all the excess. Now there's right ways to do this and wrong ways to do this. Uh, basically I'll just do it the Tom way of doing this. And uh, technically what you should do is heat up the wire and then touch the solder to the far side of it. it doesn't take a lot of solder just enough to uh, coat it all. Even then, I put a lot too much uh, on there that's essentially unnecessary. So that'll be cool now. 